In this talk, I want to introduce you to a whole new world of patterns. The one thing my four hobbies all have in common is that they are all about patterns. I want to tell you about the patterns in the structure and the way you solve a Rubik's Cube, the patterns when you play, read and write music, the patterns when you program or computer code, and the patterns in the tactics and strategy of chess. Firstly, let me tell you about the Rubik's Cube. In 1974, a man called Erno Rubik constructed the first Rubik's Cube. At the time, it was called the Magic Cube. It was used to model 3D movements of his students. My mum bought it for me in a bookstore when I was eight years old. This is the first time I solved it. At first glance, it might seem really complicated, like you have to get 54 separate squares in the right place. But if you take a look more closely, you'll notice that that is not what it is at all. When deconstructed, you'll notice that the cube has eight corner pieces, 12 edge pieces, and one core piece connected to six center pieces. The way you solve it is by using algorithms. These are sequences of turns that result in a change in the cube, and these changes eventually result in a solved cube. And it looks something like this. Now, let's move on to my violin. Music first became popular over 40,000 years ago, and the first violin was constructed in the 1500s. I started playing when I was six years old, and I love reading, writing, and playing music. Let me tell you about the patterns in music. There are several notes, such as the semibrief, which is four beats long, the minim, which is two beats long, the crotchet, which is one beat long, and the quaver, which is half a beat long. There are also many, many performance directions, such as fortissimo, which means very loud, piano, which means softly, and dolcemente, which means sweetly. If you can understand all of these patterns, then you can compose music. And if you can understand this music, you can play it, and it sounds something like this. Let me now tell you about the patterns in machines, more specifically, computers. The first programmer was a woman called Ada Lovelace. She was friends with Charles Babbage, who invented the first programmable computer. They were both mathematicians that lived in London in the 1800s. Over the course of time, several other people have invented new programming languages, such as C++, Java, and Python. Programming is responsible for games like Fortnite and Minecraft and apps like Microsoft Teams. Here is some simple code I have written that turns into a 2D window. Let me now tell you about the patterns in chess. Chess is a really old game that originated in India. It was first used to show the queen by her son the prince how her husband, the king, died in battle. It is now played by millions of people across the globe, and the best player is Magnus Carlsen, who once beat three people whilst he was blindfolded in under nine minutes. There are six chess pieces, the pawn, the rook, the knight, the bishop, the queen, and the king. The queen can move in straight lines, but it can't jump over pieces. The knight, can move in L-shapes, and it can jump over pieces. And the bishop can move along its diagonal, but it can't jump over pieces. There are sequences of moves that happen at the beginning of the games. These are called openings. There are openings such as the King's Indian Defence, the Sicilian Defence, and the Rory Lopez. Gambits also happen at the beginning of the games, and there are gambits with names like the Elephant Gambit, the Queen's Gambit, and the King's Gambit. If you can understand all of these patterns, then you're much more likely to win a game. In conclusion, if you stop and look around you, you'll notice that patterns are everywhere, in everything you do and in everything you see. 
And if you can understand these patterns, the world becomes a really fun and interesting place to live in. It becomes a whole new world, a whole new world of patterns.